Welcome to Drawing from Nature. Today we're going to be drawing the sockeye salmon. We'll also be learning about these and other species of salmon. How big do they get? How high can they jump out of the water? Do they go through amazing body changes right before they reproduce? Well, if you're interested in the answers to any of those questions, or if you'd just like to draw along with me, stick around while we draw from nature. There are many animals that are known for their migrations. Oftentimes, if we think about migratory animals, we'll oftentimes think of birds. Birds will very frequently live in one location in the wintertime, and move to a different location in the summertime. The animal that we're going to be drawing today, however, is not a bird. It's a fish. What we're going to be drawing is a sockeye salmon. It's one of many types of Pacific salmon. There are salmon in the Pacific and in the Atlantic Ocean. And we're going to be drawing it today. I think what's interesting about the sockeye salmon is it's a very handsome fish, and it especially uh, is very colorful during the spawning season. So before we get going with our drawing, let's talk about the tools we're going to be using. We have a large sheet of paper here. Your sheet of paper doesn't have to be particularly large. It can be any size. We're going to talk about scaling the animal onto your page. And the drawing implements I'm going to be using are crayons. I have a black crayon here, I have brown, and then red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So the first thing we need to do is, depending on what size paper you have, we need to make sure that we create our salmon so that it fits on the paper. This sheet of paper here is ra rather large, and as it turns out, we're going to be drawing the salmon on this page at just about life size. The sockeye salmon, uh, at its full mature length, gets to be about two feet long and can weigh up to about six pounds. So if you were to lay one right on this page, it's going to be just about the size of the drawing that we're creating today. To begin, what we want to make sure we do is size it so that whatever size paper you have, it's not flopping off on one side or the other. So we'll, let's choose a location somewhere over on this side and somewhere over on this side. And we're going to define one area is going to be the tip of the nose, and the other area is going to be the tip of the tail. In this case, the salmon is going to be swimming towards me. I'm going to find a location right around here, just about midway uh, from top to bottom on the paper and a little bit in from the edge. I'm going to put a little bit of a mark right here. This is just a guideline. It's going to fade into the rest of our drawing later on, but this will be about where the nose is going to be. On the other side, right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, one little line that's kind of in the middle of the tail. So we're going to set it in a little bit further because where we draw this line, the, the tail is actually going to extend out a little bit beyond it. So we're going to tuck it in a little bit from the end and draw a line right there. Okay, so this will be nose to the tail, and our tail is going to extend just a little bit beyond that. Okay, the general shape of a salmon is kind of an oval shape. Uh, many fish uh, are they're shaped almost like a torpedo so that they can cut through the water very easily. They uh, start pointy at one end, get fatter, and then move down to a point on the other end. The general width of the salmon is going to be something, something around this size. So you can see this distance here, and we're going to put a couple of marks top and bottom right here. So I'm going to put a mark here, about midway between our two marks, and another one right here. So now we have four marks, and these are defining the basic shape of our of our salmon fish. Okay? Now the sockeye salmon uh, will have kind of a ridge on its back here, so it's going to uh, have kind of a bump here. But first, what we want to do before we get into the, the back and the face and everything, let's kind of define uh, what's going to happen for the tail over here. Things thin out as they go back towards the tail. And right here, let's draw a couple other marks. We're going to do them about two-thirds of the way between this mark and here. So if you divide this distance from here over to here into three equal sections, pop, 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 like that, right around here is going to be where the tail is, right in that area. Let's make a little line here and a little line there. That is going to be the thickness of the tail as the body tapers back. So we've got the tip of the nose, back by the tail, its back, its belly, and the thickness of the, uh, of the tail where it joins the body here, okay? So now let's start drawing some real lines in here, okay? We're going to start up here and we're going to draw a curved line that's going to do two kinds of curves. It's going to be an S curve. First it's going to start uh, going out to the right, curve down, and then start smoothing out, okay? So watch how I do this. And it's going to be a nice smooth line, because this these lines need to cut through the water. 
just like that. All right. You got yours? Okay. Now let's do something similar for the bottom. Uh, it's not going to be exactly the same. There's going to be a little bit more of a bump uh, sticking out uh, this way. So it's going to be similar to this, but not exactly. Watch how this goes. Okay. Oh, I made a little mistake there. That's okay. We're going to come out this way and do that. Okay. Now, like I said, these are guidelines. If you put them down and you don't really like exactly the way they came out, that's okay. For me, I'm feeling like maybe I put a little bit too much bump up here. So I'm going to bring this line down a little bit like that. Like I didn't really mean that one. This is the one I really mean. And that's okay. All right. This line here, I feel like maybe this bump's a little too severe. So I'm going to bring this back a little bit. And that's the, the wonderful things with guidelines. You can kind of adapt them, change them as you go. Okay. So now let's start bringing these lines up towards the face area. We're going to do the same kind of thing that we did earlier, where we divide this up into uh, fr uh, fractions. So we're going to divide this into three uh, equal parts here, between this and here, and about a third of the way from this line, let's make a little line right there. Just a little guideline, okay? This area here is going to be the salmon's head. Now, what's interesting about sockeye salmons is, uh, well, there's many things that are interesting about them. We're going to talk a lot about their life cycle and how they uh, reproduce. But one of the things that they do when they reproduce, they get really brilliant colors. The sockeye salmon has a very bright red color to its body and a greenish color up by its face. So it's a really beautiful animal. So everything we're coloring up here is going to be kind of greenish colored and everything back here is going to be reddish colored. But first, let's start defining out this face area. Another th uh, feature that salmons tend to develop, especially during their spawning season, uh, is that uh, the males will develop kind of a hook on their snout. So let's start working on this face here, and then we're going to work on this, this kind of hook snout. It's one of the most uh, common features that people associate with salmon. Okay? So this is the tip of the nose, and what we're going to do is do a little curl right here. This is the top of their, their little hook nose right there. And from here, we're going to do a couple of curves. First, it's going to go straight, curve up, and then join over here. Okay? That's an awfully long run, don't you think? Let's give ourselves kind of a, a midway destination that we can aim for. How about right around here? Somewhere halfway between here and here. Let's make a, a midway destination. Just a little point right there. You can make a mark for yourself between there. Sometimes if you're drawing a really long line, it helps to kind of break it up and do a couple of smaller lines. From here to here, it's a, an arc just going up. So let's do that. Nice swooping arc. Just like that. Okay? And then from here to here, it's a dip down and then to the snout. Almost like kind of like a a ski jump or a water slide at a water park. So we're going to have it slope down and then come up a little bit. Here we go. Having it slope down and then come up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we've got tail over the back, swooping down to the little hook in the front there. Okay. Let's work on this little hook here. We're going to make a line like this, straight out from it. That line is going to curve down a little bit. We're going to have a bit of a straight section right here. A little bit of a curve down, but mostly straight right there. A little bend back. <laughs> There's a lot of little bends in here. And one more bend for the mouth. Coming around like that. Okay, and you can see that, that sharp hook up here. It almost reminds me of a snapping turtle, the way that's built there. All right, now let's work on the bottom jaw. The bottom jaw doesn't come quite out as far as the, the front. We'll put the tip chin right here. All right, and we're going to make a graceful curve from here to here. Okay, nice curve from here to here. Here we go. There we go. Just like that. And we're going to make a very similar line uh, for the top of the jaw. Similar kind of curve, but instead of going down here, it's going to slope up a little bit for the back side of the jaw. Ready? Just like that. Okay, and it's meeting right in that little 
alcove there. All right. All right. From here, we have pretty much a straight line from the bottom of the jaw back to here. All right. So let's execute that. Ready? Pretty straight. Just like that. Okay. So now we're seeing the basic form of the fish. You can see that big hump on the back of it. There are many different types of salmon. Uh, there, again, like I mentioned, there are Pacific salmon and Atlantic salmon. The Atlantic salmon is specifically called the Atlantic salmon. Although, interestingly, the Atlantic salmon, well, it's interesting to me anyway, the Atlantic salmon is not uh, very closely related to all of the Pacific salmon. It's called a salmon, but it's really more closely related to trout. There are differences in their life cycles. Most notably, when all of the Pacific uh, salmon go to spawn, which means they go to reproduce, they only get to do that once. They uh, are born upstream in fresh water. Uh, they swim down the streams into the rivers, out into the ocean. Uh, most of the time, most salmon do this. They live most of their lives out in the ocean, and their lives are, you know, usually somewhere up to about five years. And then they find their way back, generally, to exactly the same stream where they were born. They swim back up the stream, they spawn and meet, meet with another, if it's a male, it meets with a female, and vice versa, and they die up there. That's the, the last thing that they do in their life, is they go back up the stream where they were born, they mate, and they die. Not true with the Atlantic salmon, which, again, is more closely related to trout. They might, uh, you know, spawn uh, three, four, maybe even five times in their lifetime. So, different, uh, different types of fish have different types of life cycles. The Pacific salmon only, only spawn and reproduce once, though when they are upstream, they will do multiple nests and they can have somewhere around uh, two to 10,000 eggs that they will, lawn, uh, they, they will lay uh, during just one of their, their spawning uh, adventures. All right, so next, why don't we finish up this tail area over here and then we'll have a complete outline, then we can start working on, on fins, okay? So the tail is a branching tail, it has a top part, and it has a bottom part. Uh, the top part is going to start here and go to a point right around here. Now this point is a little bit further back from there. And the bottom uh, part of the fin is going to be just about in line with that. Right around there. So top, bottom, and then they're going to come together in the middle. Okay? So we're going to do a rel relatively straight line from the top to this point. Just like that. Maybe it curves up just a little bit. Bottom. Similar, except it's going to curve down. Just like that. Okay? And then what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to meet in the middle. Both of them, they're going to start going sort of a straightish direction. Like that. And then there's going to be a curve back to there and out. Just like that. Okay. Why don't we work on some of the other fins here? They have a, a top fin, a dorsal fin. It comes off of the body somewhere right around the middle here, right about where we would put that, that midpoint. It's going to start right here, and it'll go back to a point somewhere around here. Let's little, make a little mark there. And now let's make a little arc, like a rainbow, except just black. There we go. So there's the top of the dorsal fin. I feel like I made this curl down just a little too much, so I'm going to use my guideline magic and straighten that out a little at the top, just like that. Okay. Uh, the dorsal fin has a thickness. It runs about that far back. And then we're going to have this curl back just a little, like there. And then we connect these two, like that. Okay, so that is called the dorsal fin. That's the fin on the top. Sharks, obviously, are famous for their dorsal fin, and many fish have a dorsal fin. All right. Now, we've got a couple of other fins, the two in the back here, and then one down underneath. Why don't we work on this one right here? It's a very small fin. It's almost shaped like a teardrop, where the point of it is facing in this direction. Here we go. Teardrop-shaped fin. Okay. Now, we have another fin here. It's shaped similarly to the dorsal fin, but it's stretched out a little bit. The back side is around here. The front is somewhere around there. This one goes like that, like that, and then we'll connect these two, just like there. 
Okay. Salmon are well known for their ability to swim. They're using their bodies, which are very muscular, and all of their fins, uh, usually to fight up rivers, streams, rapids, waterfalls, to get back to the the shallow areas where they were born, salmon have been known to be able to jump up waterfalls that are up to 10 feet high. Now, if you think of a, a full-grown adult, most full-grown adults are somewhere around six feet, so that is almost, almost twice as tall as an adult that these fish can jump out of the standing water up over a waterfall, which is pretty amazing. They must have to get up a lot of speed to do that. And they do that with their muscular bodies and their fins, mostly their tails there. We've got another fin on the bottom, a small one. Comes off, uh, it's just about in line with this fin up here. And this has a thickness starting here to about there, okay? And this one curves down like that. Has a little bit of a uh, backside there. And then this is much more of a rounded one, a little bit more like this. Rounded shape, just like that. Maybe coming to a little bit more of a tip there. All right, we've got one more fin, and that is this one right up here next to the gills. And we're gonna be drawing the gills in just a little bit, but first, why don't we put this fin in here? This fin is not gonna extend off of the body in a way that we can see it from the side here. It's gonna be on top of the body. It has a thickness of about that, okay? So if you wanna draw a couple of lines there just to guide you. It has a length that goes back to about here, all right? And we're gonna do a curved line from the top to the tip, okay? And then a curved line back like that. All right, now that we've got the basic body laid out here, let's work a little bit on the gills and on the face area up here. First, why don't we place the salmon's eye? The salmon's eye is somewhere right around this area. If you draw, like the dot, literally draw, but uh, imagine a line going straight up from the back curl of the lip here and put it about halfway between the top of the head and the mouth. We've got an eye right here. Let's draw a nice circle for an eye. Right like that, okay? Now we're gonna do the gills. The gills obviously are how salmon and other fish breathe. Uh, they take in water, extract the oxygen from the water in their gills, and then the water gets uh, recirculated out of the fish through these gill areas. And they're usually crescent shapes, and they're a crescent shape in the salmon as well. There's uh, two layers of them. There's a larger one here, and then a smaller one inside. Let's do the larger one first. The larger one's gonna start somewhere right up around there, and it's gonna curve and end just above this fin, this pectoral fin here, okay? First, it comes down a little bit, and then there's gonna be a sweeping curve, like that. Okay. Now we have the smaller gill opening that's kind of inside that. It has a little bit of a curl right here, but about midway between the eye and this other gill, maybe a little bit closer to the other gill. A little bit of a curve right there. Comes down, okay. And then it's gonna have another sweeping curve and it's going to be heading back towards this little lip area here. Just like that. All right. How's yours coming along? Looking all right? If there's anything that you wanna change, this is the time to do it. We have our guidelines down. If there are bumps in here that you feel like your bump looks like it's bulging out too much or you feel like there should be more of a bulge in some area of the fish or if you forgot a fin, this is the time to put all those things in. But if you're feeling good about what you've created, we can move forward and we're gonna start putting in a little bit of detail here, putting in some texture and then we're gonna to get to color. And like I said, the sockeye salmon is a beautiful red and green fish and those colors really intensify when they are going upstream for their spawning. All right, why don't we start with the teeth? Salmon have teeth all up in here. I, I mentioned it reminds me of a snapping turtle. It looks very aggressive. These are definitely a serious predator. They eat things like uh, shrimp, and squid, small fish, while they are out in the ocean. Many salmon will eat while they are out at sea, and then when they head up to spawn, they won't eat at all. They'll just uh, live on their own body reserves of fat. All right. And these teeth are getting smaller and smaller as they go back, and they'll probably disappear right around there. 
But these are very effective predators when they're out in the ocean because they have to build up all that muscle and that fat for their long journey back to their spawning grounds. All right, so that we have some teeth on the top jaw. Let's put some teeth on the bottom here as well. They're just little triangles with a little, a little curl to them. Lots of little teeth in here. All right, there we go. Why don't we visit this eye a little bit? There's nothing in there right now. Why don't we put a pupil here in this eye? And the pupil is going to be reasonably large for this eye. I'm gonna draw a circle, just like that, okay? And then to give it a little life, I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a glisten in that circle. So I'm not gonna color the entire pupil area in. I'm gonna put a little circle inside of the pupil and keep that part white. So it has a little bit of life to its eye there. Maybe not appropriate for a fish. <laughs> you know, oftentimes fish don't have the most life, uh, life-like uh, eyes uh, of all the animals that we're associating with. Most likely just because they're very different from us. I think that we see other animals that are more closely related to humans and there's a bit of a, uh, more of a kinship between them. Fish are very distant ancestors of ours. Uh, so, you know, their eyes are a little bit different, but you know, we can give them a little bit of spark of life here, okay? Next thing we need to do is put some texture into some of these fins. So uh, all of these fins have little uh, bones on the inside that uh, keep them rigid and keep them uh, functional in the water. And uh, the, these bones uh, go roughly parallel with the, uh, the shape of how these fins grow out. So I'm gonna dr just draw some lines that match the general curvature of each of these Fins. So I got a couple there. It's not very dense. We can make that a little more dense. More lines in there. We don't want to fill it all in with black, but give it a general sense that there are spines going through that area. And let's do the same on this fin. Again, spines coming out like that. We're going to do that down here on this fin. Just matching the direction that these fins have grown out of the, uh, the salmon. All right, this one here. Just like that. And yours don't have to be exactly the same as mine and you certainly don't need to count them. <laughs> I'm not counting mine. Just to give a general sense that these are fins and that there's a rigidity to them. That's what we're working on right now. Now, before we do the, uh, the lines inside of this tail, I wanna uh, differentiate between what is muscle and what is fin. These, remember these two lines that we did top and bottom here? We're gonna draw a little bit of a, a semicircle, uh, kind of lightly, more of a guideline just like that. This part is muscle, this is fish, this is fin here. And from here, we're gonna do radiating lines. Radiating lines mean that they seem like they're coming from a common point. These lines here are all parallel with each other, whereas these lines, as they leave the fish, they're spreading out as they go out along the fin. So oftentimes when I'll, I'll do something like this, instead of just going straight across, I'll maybe start in the middle and do one and then kind of go halfway between here and here and vary the angle so that my line is halfway between this angle and halfway between this angle. Like that, then like that, and then kind of keep going between these. <laughs> Doing a little reaching here. There we go. And just keep adding lines in here until we feel like it has a density that is akin to what we've seen in some of the other fins. So they have a similar feel. Something like that. All right, last fin we have is right here. And again, we're gonna do a similar thing where we're gonna define what is meat, what is muscle, and what is fish. We've got a little line right here on the inside. This is the muscle, this is the fin. And the lines in this fin run in this direction. Just like that. Now there is one other line that we're gonna draw in this fish. And this, uh, this line has to do with 
it seems like it's a sensory organ on the fish. It helps fish kind of uh, sense what is around them, almost like the whiskers of a cat or a mouse or something. This is a line that's in a lot of fish and it runs from the front along the side all the way to the back. And scientists are still discovering more and more about all the different features and uh, abilities of different animals. So what we have here is all the basic lines. So we're gonna take the black, put it down, and jump in with some color. Let's see, we could start with green first or we could start with red first. Why don't we start with red first? Because another name for the sockeye salmon is also the red salmon. Also, uh, it, it's also known as the blueback salmon, but since we're gonna be coloring this in red, why don't we start with the red color because they are oftentimes referred to as red salmon. Many animals have different names, and the sockeye salmon is one of them. All right, I've taken some of the paper off the side of my crayon because I want to put a lot of red down, and you can put a lot more color down when you're working with the side of your crayon instead of the end of your crayon. All right, and what I'm going to do is, as I'm putting down the color here, I'm going to do it smoothly, and I'm going to do it in the direction of the scale's growth. I don't want to just go any, any which way direction. We want to give the sense that this is a smooth, sleek creature that can cut through the water. So as I'm putting color down, it's going to be in the direction that the water flows as it moves over it. All right. I'm going to start right over the back here, and I'm not going to go super dark. We're just going to give it an initial pass of color using the side here. Now you remember I kind of changed where my guidelines were earlier. I kind of suck that line in. So when I'm coloring, I'm not going to color up to my earlier mistake line. I'm going to color up to my, my inner line here. Going all the way to the tail, and we're going to stop right where the meat ends. We are going to be putting some color out into the tail later, but we'll do that, that later on. Okay. So let's give just a nice, even coat of red to this red salmon also known as a sockeye salmon. I mentioned that their, their red color becomes pronounced during the spawning season when they're going upstream to mate. Uh, other salmon, uh, other Pacific salmon, also have other sorts of uh, characteristics that change while they are going up to doing uh, their, their spawning. Uh, one uh, characteristic and one, one type of salmon is that their hump grows larger. Uh, some of, these, some of these characteristic changes are just on the male salmon, uh, some are on both the male and the female. Uh, another uh, characteristic change that happens in some salmon is that some of them will get purple stripes through their body. So it's, a, it's an interesting time in their lives because they're changing their appearance as they're kind of changing their purpose in life. When they were out at sea, they were a, a survival and eating machine and then when they go back upstream to their, their home area, they become uh, a reproducing machine and they're probably trying to attract mates with their, their color changes and physiology changes. All right, so we're just about finishing up with that red color on the fish, just like that. Okay, why don't we hit some of these fins and then we are gonna come back and do what's called modeling on, on uh, this red area where we're gonna be having some areas be darker, some areas be lighter, and give the sense that there's some three-dimensionality uh, three to this animal here, and it's not just a flat fish on a paper. But before we do that, let's color in some of these fins. We'll start with this top one here. And the same thing as I did before, thinking about the directionality that this thing grows out of the fish, we're gonna do our strokes of color in the same direction that these little bones are inside of those uh, inside of those fins. Okay, that one. This one back here. Just like that. I'm going to skip the back one because that's a little bit of a special case. We're going to come back to that one afterwards. We hit this. The reason that I'm skipping by the tail is because it's not all red. It's a bit of a mixture of red and green and we want to take a little bit extra care with that one. Okay, this fin here. The pectoral fin up here is not going to be colored red. It's more of a grayish blue fin. So we'll be coming back to that one later as well. Okay, so we've got our fins. Now let's work on this 
this tail a little bit. Like I said, it is red and green. The red starts near the body and it's almost like a firework where it kind of shoots out and the back is more of a greenish color and the, uh, the front is a reddish color. So watch as I do this. I'm gonna still be working in the direction that the tail grows out in. I'm gonna make a little bit of red like that and then I'm gonna start doing some streaks like fireworks coming out. And I'm following the direction of all these little lines that we drew earlier in the tail, like that. All right, so we have kind of a little splash of red up there. All right, so now let's work a little bit on the modeling in the body here. Uh, the fish is gonna be shiny. If you're looking at it, maybe we, we see like kind of a gleam of sunlight on the side of it. And as the body kind of curves away from us, maybe we'll get a little bit more of a shadowy kind of feel. So coming along the, the top and along the bottom, we're gonna darken it up a little bit. So why don't we do that? So let's start pushing down a little bit more like we mean it right along this top. Darken that up and we'll stop right around the tail and then we'll come back, still pushing it in dark. And we're gonna Keep doing passes, bring it closer and closer until we get to somewhere around this point here. This is what's called a gradient, where you're changing your color or your tone from one color or tone to another. The tone of this top here is a, a darker, richer, more vibrant red. The tone that we're gradiating to, transitioning to, is kind of a lighter red, more reflection in there. Okay. How's that coming out on your paper? I feel like this looks really nice right here, but I wanna make this even richer up here. I'm gonna push down even harder over this top. Really make it so that I'm not seeing any paper or close to no paper through that top area. Okay, now let's do something similar on the bottom. Just like we did on the top, we're gonna to start on the bottom, again, moving in the direction of the, uh, the scales growth going front to back, back to front, really darkening this up to the tail and then back. And we'll just keep doing passes and we, until we pull this up a little bit past that, that little sensory line that we sketched earlier. As you're doing this with the side of your crayon, you might notice that there is a cool little Side effect, an added benefit of doing this, is that you're starting to sharpen your crayon <laughs> as you do it. So if you need a sharp tip of red later on, this is self-sharpening. We're gonna go right up to these gills and not go over the gills. I always like it when you can do two things at the same time. We're both finishing our paper, or finishing our image, getting the color down, we are sharpening our crayon. And with all this pushing, we're getting just a little bit of exercise too. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna stop just a little bit past that, that sensory line on the side of the fish. Just like, like that. I'm gonna try to darken in just a little bit more through here, make it a little bit darker. All right maybe just a little bit more on the bottom, same as we did on the top, but we came back and made it even a little bit darker afterwards. All right, how does yours look? Does it look like you have kind of a three-dimensional image there? There's a little bit of a gleam across your fish, and we did it only by transitioning from a darker red to a lighter red there, and a darker red to a lighter red right through there, okay. Now that we've got this all done, I'm looking at these fins and I'm thinking, gosh, those fins, they don't look that red anymore. So why don't we go back in, put a little bit more red into these fins, like we mean it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little bit more into these guys. That one. This one, we gotta be careful with this one. We wanna leave our streaks like we had earlier. So leaving some streaks. that. All right, I'm gonna do this lower fin here. 
you notice that I'm going out of my own lines here and there. When, when people first start learning to draw and color and everything, that's, it's almost a, it's a commandment, that's a rule. It's like, stay within the lines, don't go outside the lines. You know, it's, uh, you can go outside the lines a little bit and did it, did it destroy the entire drawing? <laughs> can you not tell what it is anymore? It's okay to play with it and it's okay to kind of fly outside of your lines sometimes. Sometimes going outside of your lines can give uh, an image a little bit of energy. It can uh, give it a sense of motion. If we added some, some little lines outside of this, it might make it look like the tail's moving a little bit. So there's all sorts of effects that you can get. A lot of the rules that you learn about drawing and how to draw correctly or how not to draw correctly, a lot of those can be bent and broken. It's good to know how to stay in the lines if you want to, but it's not a big deal if you let yourself go out of them and break all sorts of other rules too. All right. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, we're gonna be doing a, a green head and then I think we need to kinda do a little bit more shading in here. Before we do the shading in here, why don't, we, why don't we jump into the green head because I'm sure once we do the green head, we're gonna to wanna to do some shading in that head as well. So let's take our red, retire it. Boy, this red is really sharpened now. And I'm gonna jump over to my green crayon. Now this green crayon, I've already peeled away a lot of the paper. You might wanna do that yourself. Uh, and we're gonna start working up in, in this area over here. Why don't we start from this hook snout? And we're gonna just lightly put in the green. We don't want to be super hard where we're making it so you couldn't see any white paper through there. We're just going to lightly color the green through this area. And the reason for that is that their heads aren't this color green. They're a shade of green. So we're going to take this, we're going to take a few other colors, we're going to blend them together and make this look like a realistic color that a fish head, a salmon fish head might be. I'm going to take this color and uh, have it slope all the way from the nose down to where this pectoral fin is, across these gills, across this area here, right up to and around the eye. We're not gonna go into the eye. The eye is gonna be kind of a yellowish color. Going around the eye. If you dip into the eye, it's okay, but try to avoid it. All right, right through these gills here. Again, you can see how much quicker it is when you're using the side of the crayon. And we're gonna do just a little bit on this jaw, just along the bottom of this jaw. We're gonna leave some of this white, okay? Just along the bottom of the jaw, there, and a little bit, a little bit up in here. Just like that. Okay, put down the green. When we work a little bit on this pectoral fin, I mentioned it's kind of a grayish blue color. We take a little bit of blue, Again, direction of the, the growth. Here we go. Looks a little weird being such a bright blue, but don't worry, we're gonna address that. So we get that, that colored up as well. Okay, now the color that we're gonna use to start shading things in is a brown crayon. We could mix other different types of colors in, but if you have a brown crayon, it's just a quick way of getting a little bit of mud, a little bit of earth tones in there. And we're gonna use it to good effect here on this salmon. Why don't we start with this glaringly green head and uh, start toning this down a little bit. Same thing as we did with the green crayon. We're gonna take the brown crayon and just go over kind of lightly just to mute it down to make it not so bright, not so vibrant. When you buy sets of uh, crayons, whether they're Corolla, uh, Crayola or whatever brand of crayons you might be getting. Oftentimes they'll be in these huge sets with so many different pre-mixed colors, but you can really get by with just the primary and secondary colors, throw some black in there, brown makes it convenient. You can get by with just a handful of colors and uh, when you're controlling your own color mixes, you're not just limited to what comes in the box, you can have uh, the ability to choose you know, any color that you can imagine and figure out how to mix on your own. All right, so I've gone over all that green and we've created a new color. If you want to, you've created a brand new color. Perhaps it's never existed before. You could name that color yourself. Uh, I'm not going to venture a name for my color. It's brownish green, earthy green. But uh, what you've created on your, your paper at home is a color mix that has never existed before. And that's, that's a great thing. All right, there we go. So I've got all the areas that we did green, a little brown. Let's tone down this fin as well. Put a little brown in the fin as well. 
Same thing as we did before. Just lightly over, and you see how that really toned down the blue in there. Okay. Next, what I'd like to do while we have the brown is uh, start shading some of the areas on the body. Uh, we've only used red on the body so far, and that's great. They, they do get very bright red. That's why they call them the red salmon. But we're going to uh, mute it down, make it a little bit less incredibly red using the brown. So why don't we start across the bottom, and just the way that we toned all this down, let's take the red and let's not go up into this light white area, but kind of float over a lot of this other area here. And just get some brown in there. And you may have to push down pretty hard because we put down some pretty aggressive red through these areas. But we're going to be hitting all the places that will accept a little bit of, of brown crayon wax. Really just muting that stuff up as best we can. But again, keeping that light area across the middle, that's the little gleaming shine that reminds us this is a three-dimensional, wet, shiny fish. Okay, so we've muted this a little. I think I can put even a little more here. Let's go over the top, same thing. Over the top, just getting it a little murky there. All right. We can do a little bit in the fins, maybe just kind of a, a, a darkening in the mid. I'm pushing down pretty hard, I guess. All right, no big deal. I'm just gonna peel a little paper off this crayon and we'll get going again. All right, maybe kind of a darkening area in the middle. Wow, okay. There was some extensive damage with that crayon explosion. All right. There we go, maybe darken it up where it joins the body here. Just like that. All right, same here. Let's darken it up where it joins the body, all through here. About halfway down the fin on this one as well. Okay, and a little bit on, on this fin too, just to give it a little bit of a variety of, uh, of colors there. All right. So in the same way that we kind of darken these areas up, let's think about doing similar things on the face. The face still has a very flat look. There's not a lot of modeling, not a lot of dimensionality to the face. So let's start correcting that. Why don't we come down over the top and start shading on the top area here. The same way that we kind of went the whole way, front to back for the red when we did that. Let's do that here with this head coming across the top, going to the, the hooked snout, which grow more hookish and extreme during the mating season. All right, and we'll fade it out right around there. Darken that up. Okay, let's do a similar thing on the bottom here, coming along the bottom of the top jaw and transitioning into this gill. All right, so shading this up, shading, shading following the contour that we created earlier, right along this gill here, and fading as we go up like that. And let's kind of fill in this area through here. Just, just like that. We can just keep bringing it up and up until it kind of feels right, like there's some, some uh, form there that we've created. Let's do a little bit more around the eye do a line of dark kind of like that and a similar line over the eye like that. Wow, it made it look mean suddenly, didn't it? <laughs> we definitely gave our fish some personality there. That's okay. So this is a, uh, this is a sockeye salmon as seen from the perspective of their prey. <laughs> the, uh, the furrowed brow, the uh, ambitious, hungry expression and those, those teeth out in front here. All right, so we'll darken up around that that eye a little bit and transition down underneath and transition up over there. All right. And let's work on modeling out this second gill. Same thing, we'll start from the bottom down here, go up along the back edge like that, up along this edge, 
and then we'll kind of just fill it in, maybe about part way up. Like that. And you can really see we're already really getting a sense of shape here just by doing these couple of little things. Let's put some more dark on the bottom side, underneath here. It's kind of darken up this whole area, I would think. It's a little shadowy down there. And again, keeping this area here white. Right underneath there. Right, again, I went into my white just a little bit there. That was accidental. Did it ruin the whole drawing? It's fine. You can make little mistakes here and there. Darken that up a little bit as well. And, and up in here. Why don't we put just a little bit more brown in here? Just on this front part to kind of join it. Maybe do a couple lines there to give it some texture. Okay. While we have the brown, let's add texture in one other place. And that is across the body here. Salmon are covered in scales. And we want to express that in the texture. So what we're going to be doing is take kind of a sharp edge of your brown. Now my brown, as you saw, broke a couple of times. But on the back side, I've got some nice edges here around the back end of the cylinder. So I'm going to use that edge. And I'm going to make some little crisscross lines. There are going to be some lines going this way and some lines going this way. Here we go. There we go, just like that. I think I might do another pass just like that in that direction. All right, and you're starting to see through here a little bit of a feeling of scale. And we're gonna do the same in the other direction, perpendicular, which means at a right angle. Okay. Just like that. Before we put the brown down, we want to put a little bit of that brown and green into the tail. We'll use the brown to kind of fill in the areas that we did not fill in earlier. So going between all those red sections. Right, just like that. And we're going to do this in reverse order. As we did before, I'm going to take the brown, put it down. I'm going to pick up that green again. And we want it to, the color in the tail is pretty similar to what's in the head. So let's put a little bit of that green again, just over the areas that are brown. We don't want to go over the red areas. We want to keep those streaks. Those are very handsome streaks. I'm sure they're very impressive to all the other fish. And we don't want to, don't want to bury any of that. All right. A little bit of green in there. All right, just a couple more things left to do. We're gonna start with yellow. We're gonna color in that eye. Now, not the highlight that's in the pupil, but around the other areas. And try not to touch the black. If you mix uh, yellow and black, kind of streaks together and kind of makes a muddy, well, it's not yellow anymore. So try to stay away from your edge lines a little bit. But if you streak in a little bit, that's fine. I streaked in a little bit myself when I was doing it. All right, this uh, yellow is a nice kind of highlight color. We can take the highlight color and maybe hit a few highlights in here. Maybe a highlight over the, the eye where the sun's kind of glistening over the eye here. Maybe a highlight on the top of this, uh, this gill here, making a little crescent there, making a little crescent here as well. On the tail, the back tail can sometimes have a little bit of a yellow color. Let's put a little bit of yellow mixed in here. All right. And then this area that we left white, why don't we put just a little bit, a little bit of yellow in there. And we can even feather that yellow out into the red and it'll give it a little bit of a golden feel for the entire fish. All right. We're coming along. We're almost there. There's just one thing we want to do is come back with the black and do some real shading here and there. There's a couple places we want to darken up even a little bit more. We're going to do some uh, darkening at the bottom of this gill here. Just shading that in a little bit, just like that. The bottom of this gill, same thing. A little bit of shading, just like that. The back of the, the lip here is usually a little bit of a scale that kind of flips back like that. We can, we can add that little detail in. Around the tip of the nose, we can darken that up a little bit, coming over the top. 
and darken up all this area through here, the bottom a little bit, maybe even go very lightly over this area here. Just a little bit of black introduced into that area. Maybe a little bit around the eye, just a bit. Not every fish is the same. So yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine because all the fish are different. A little bit of shading here, through here, a little bit of shading on the bottom, under here, maybe darken up the scale, uh, I'm sorry, this fin a little bit, just like that. And the last place I think would be nice is just to introduce a little bit more shading on this belly side, but not too dark. We don't want to ruin the beautiful red color of the red salmon. Just a little bit of black through here, helping to darken all that up. And there you go. What a beautiful fish, the sockeye salmon. Really one of nature's most uh, brilliantly colored fish, and certainly of the migrating salmon, I think one of the most attractive animals. How did your drawing come out? Is it exactly like this? If it's not exactly like this, that's no trouble at all. All salmon are different, all pictures can be different, and as long as you're happy with how yours came out, that's all that you need to worry about. So thank you very much for joining me today, and I hope you join me next time when we draw from nature.